Welcome back, everyone, to episode two of Monsters Flashback, presented by HDS Brand Solutions for your promotional merchandise, print solutions, brand management, and corporate apparel needs. Visit hdsideas.com. Tony Brown here with you uh, alongside Jock Calendar. And Jock, usually when we're uh, calling the action here, we're a little bit closer together. Right now, you're several miles away out on the West Coast, but good to see you nonetheless. Yeah, good to see you. It's, uh, yeah all different times right now that we're dealing with. It, it certainly is, but one thing we can all share are great memories of the Monsters' top games from this season, and one of them uh, that we're going to examine today was the second game of our Lumberjacks weekend. This was back on January the 4th, uh, a 5-4 win against the Milwaukee Admirals, and it came on the heels of a dramatic 3-2 overtime win the night prior, also against the Admirals, of course, uh, and what was one of the classic moments of the season. However, this game uh, was a matinee, so that means a couple of things, Jock. Short rest, an uh, angry opponent that you just defeated the night prior, and uh, in the Monsters case, a lot of guys uh, currently or at the time with the Blue Jackets or injured. So this was a big challenge coming off a big win the night before. Well, definitely with uh, with Milwaukee, they probably never lost too many two games in a row uh, to that point in the season. And, uh, uh, you know, it's always tough to play a, a opponent twice in a row and beat them, especially when it's a top team. You're shorthanded as far as uh, some of your regulars and some of those guys that are, are playing more minutes. Now they have to play in less than, you know, less than 24 hours the next afternoon and they're not used to that amount of ice time so it's it's a you know your body's sore a little bit from from the night before and uh, you're a little bit tired but uh, the monster sure came out and uh, uh, played well and what another exciting game with uh, both teams playing so well and, and the fans uh, uh, got their money's worth. It, it really was a great game back and forth battle lots of goals scored a come from behind finish with Monsters ending up on top. A lot of fun. Looking forward to watching this one back. Uh, so without further ado, here is our second episode of Monsters Flashback presented by HDS Brand. Enjoy Cleveland's 5-4 home win over Milwaukee on the 4th of January. We're still waiting for our opening faceoff here. Uh, again, unclear as to what the delay is. Looks like uh, perhaps uh, something with the glass or the door over in the far corner, and now I'm told we're satisfied enough to get going here. So the puck is down at center. We're underway in the opening frame of this one. Monsters and Milwaukee Admirals for the second straight day. A little matinee start this afternoon. Face off controlled by the Admirals. Very feisty game yesterday. Over 50 penalty minutes for Cleveland. Paul Bittner had 20 of those in his column alone. Puck dropped into the Monsters zone to our right. Thiessen tried to fire that one off the Shin pads of a Milwaukee player succeeded in doing that, if not clearing his defensive end. And now it's back behind the Monsters net for Adam Clendenning as he will track out of his defensive zone. Just barely underway in the first period. No score between the Monsters and Milwaukee Admirals. Monsters dump the puck in. Out of his net there was Grosnick. Cleveland has yet to face Grosnick this year. The two games between these two clubs both featured Connor Ingram in net for Milwaukee. And Grosnick... Uh, one of the very top goaltenders in the league this year has great numbers, as we told you in the pregame. We've got a penalty coming here as Marco Dano draws a call in his return to the lineup. Arm up, and it will be hooking against Milwaukee, and the Monsters are going to have a power play that comes just 102 into this first period. Monsters yesterday with the extra skater went one for five. They're one for 11 in the season series against Milwaukee, 27th in the league with a 14.2. Overall power play percentage, 11.3% at home. That's dead last in the AHL. Meanwhile, the penalty kill for Milwaukee strong, but not uh, super elite. Sixth in the league overall, 84.9%, 82.5% on the road. That's 11th in a 31-team AHL. So the Monster is scoreless here in the first period. Fire off the draw. Fix Wolanski had that shot tipped by the Admiral defenseman, but it's fought off by Grosnick and covered. And that will uh, stop time. So Davies in the box for hooking nearly cost his team a goal there as another Milwaukee defenseman got in the way of that shot from Fix Wolanski trying to block it. But Scott Savage, the former monster, nearly tipped it in on his own netminder, Grosnick. 18.50 to go in the opening period. No score yet. Face off left side of the offensive end for Cleveland. Pino is kicked out of the draw, so Mateau took it. 
And now it's forced off to the far corner of the Milwaukee zone with a minute 44 remaining in the Cleveland power play. Cleared down by Milwaukee. Monsters back to retrieve. It's Clendenning as Thiessen left it for him. Adam Clendenning out of the left side of his defensive zone now. Feeds the breakout pass to Mateau, the hero from an evening ago. Into the middle, fix Wolanski, hold free to Mateau, and a great right pad save. Early highlight for the Admirals and their netminder, Troy Grosnick, as he denies Mateau after a terrific mini 2-1-0 feed to the near post from Trey fix Wolanski. That was the combination, fix Wolanski to Mateau, that netted yesterday's overtime winner. And here, just an early unsuccessful scoring chance. Pushed back into the Cleveland end. There's a minute left on the monster power play there first, and we're only two minutes into the opening period. Scoreless so far. Here comes Glenn Denning out of his D zone again to Bittner, and now on the left wing, Justin Scott into the left circle for Bittner. One-timer save made by Grosnick, and the puck pops out towards the right point where Simpson reeled it in momentarily, but it's cleared down by the Admirals, and Glenn Denning again will grab it behind the net. 39 seconds left in the Cleveland power play there first. Clendenning to Bittner. Bittner through center. On the left wing, tried to tip it ahead to Scott. It was broken up by the defenseman Smith for Milwaukee. He pushed it to center and it was sent the rest of the way by Tanner Genot. Back for the Monsters to regather with 20 seconds left on their first man up try. Simpson to Maxime Forche at center. He'll dump it in. Far corner to near. Justin Scott motors into the area and hammers it from whence it came. Ten seconds left on the Davies penalty as the Monsters cough it up at the far side of the Milwaukee zone. And now it'll be skated ahead with speed. Admirals and Richard in the left circle, fed into the middle, and Thiessen has his first save. Not much of a shot there uh, by Olivier after the great find by Anthony Richard, but Thiessen... Into the game now with his first save of the contest and the season. Still scoreless, the penalty now over. Monsters 0 for 1 with the extra man. We're back to full and even strength with 16.40 to go in the first period. Monsters in the offensive end trying to hem in a Admirals team that I'm told is dealing with illness today. Forcing uh, one of their top defensemen, Sa uh, Santini, Steve Santini, out of the lineup. And so a couple of changes for the Admirals from last night. Here is Gallant into the offensive zone offside. Turkoff was a step ahead. That'll halt the clock with 16-17 to go in the first period. Vino, Bittner, Anton Carlson, and Clendenin draw outside the Milwaukee line, near side of center in front of the Admiral bench. One back to Clendenin. Clendenin directs traffic with a little nod of the head to Paul Bittner. And will patiently start the breakout as usual. He connects with Anton Carlson. AK scored the, oh, dumps this one in, came off a stanchion and right out off the outside of the net of Grosnick, caught the goaltender by surprise. AK had the first goal of the game, that's what I was trying to tell you, uh, in yesterday's 3-2 overtime win for the Monsters, his second of the season. Back into the Monsters zone now, Carlson watches closely as Richard walks this out to the center point, gets around a man in the slot, backhands one through the Monsters uh, left circle, and that one ended up in the corner, untouched by anybody. Left point, the Admirals work it down the wall. Down to the right point, it's Donovan. Donovan now leaves it out high. Richard, high slot, fires wide left on Thiessen off the end wall, and Bittner chips it up and out of his zone. And now Turkoff hung up as he skates into this loose puck. Turkoff, left circle, Milwaukee zone, attempted a shot, but it fluttered away. That certainly could and likely should have been interference there as Turkoff had a burst of speed nullified by that uh, away from the puck contact applied by the Milwaukee skater. Monsters retrieve in their own zone and try to generate some speed through center. Forche overskated that puck. Back inside the Monster line. Carr cuts to the front and he scores. Daniel Carr, the reigning AHL MVP, goes five hole on Brad Thiessen. And the Monsters trail the Admirals who draw first blood. It's 1-0 Milwaukee. Nice move by Daniel Carr there after the turnover at center from Forche. Carr just walked it into the right circle, kind of sold the defenseman by glancing into the middle, selling a pass, and then opened the legs on Thiessen and slipped it home. For Carr, it's his 13th goal of the season and 26th point. Time of the goal, 16-04 of period one. one nothing for the Admirals, a four-on-four four tally. Not the ensuing draw, back to action we go, still with four players on either side. 30 seconds to go in that Situation, under four to go in the opening period. Admirals with the lead thanks to Carr. 
Monsters into the offensive end after the faceoff. High slot rip of a wrister there from Fix Wolanski went wide right. On the goaltender Grosnick, now Milwaukee through the neutral zone. Hit hard was Rem Pitlick, former Minnesota Golden Gopher, inside his offensive blue line. Then Mateau battled through contact with Pitlick down through the neutralized area. And eventually, Stefan able to launch the puck in deep. Admirals recover, though, and now break out. Davies out to his own blue line. Sent back towards him by Wilkins. Taken away by Matt Donovan. Smooth skating, puck moving defenseman for the Admirals. Though Milwaukee turns it over uncharacteristically on that zone entry. Monsters regroup. Summerbee's pass ahead goes all the way behind the Milwaukee net, but no icing. Grosnick, the goaltender, launched it back to the right point. Summerbee recovers, fires on, save made, rebound, and a th third stop applied by Grosnick as the puck finally grabbed by the Milwaukee netminder as the whistle sounds with 2.44 left in the period. Big scramble at the front of the net. And I think the problem for the Monsters and Marco Dano on that last chance, not generating possession towards the front of the net, but Scott stymied a couple of times, and Dano, too, because they didn't elevate that puck, allowing Grosnick to lay his legs across the ice, make the initial save, and then locate and cover the rebound. Now Grosnick has been sharp. Thiessen has two for the most part, but the Admirals maintain the 1-0 lead thanks to the goal from Daniel Carr. 13th of the year from Freddie Gaudreau at 16.04, the first at four on four. Monsters knocking on the door. Face off in the offensive end, won by Cleveland. Glantz stashed to the center blue. Carlson held the line. Far corner, it's Barash. Ran into Davies as he tried to change direction. Poked up to Tanner Genot. Connects in the middle with Olivier. Finds the left side of the neutralized red line. Dumps it into the Cleveland end. Carlson protecting that puck against the end wall. Pops out to the right of Thiessen. And located by Steve Johnson. Skates into an open area. His pass ahead. Grab tape to tape. Barash. Nice stick handling move on the left wing. But he coughed it up again. Back inside the offensive zone. Genot into the middle. Redirect for the Admirals who took an offensive posture quickly there. They are such a good transition club. Shot though. Handled by Thiessen. Now through the slot. Drop back to the high slot for a shot by Davies that floated. And missed the net. Now Gallant pries it up the left boards and over his own blue line with a little bit of help from Abbott Gerdukas. Simpson has it towards the offensive blue line for Cleveland, fed it behind his position on the ice towards Clendenning, who dumped it in. Monsters trying to get something going here in the final minute and a half of the first period. They trail Milwaukee 1-0 with 90 seconds left in the first. Big scrum for the puck near corner of the Monsters Offensive zone, back out left point Simpson, right point Clendenning towards the net. It was chopped at by Turkoff, but not control. Bounces into the near corner. Bittner uses the kick plate out to the right point. Clendenning offered a quick release shot on. Puck on edge, but handled by Grossnick. Now taken by Milwaukee. They'll skate it out to the neutralized area, into the offensive zone on the left wing. Trying to return that to the middle of the ice there. No luck for the Admirals. Little late parting shot for Clendenning there on the one-time puck carrier, Ellie Tolvin. Got one minute under that now, left in the opening period. Milwaukee with a 1-0 lead. Monsters trying to beat the buzzer with a tying goal. His puck expertly checked up by Clendenning. It looked like icing, but then he got it to uh, bite with a little English there, allowing himself the opportunity to get off the ice. 35 seconds left in the period. Shot from the left point, took a turn before it found Thiessen. And off into the near corner of the Monsters' D zone. Summerby stapling up his man against the dasher there. Spins around the would-be puck carrier. And back after the near corner. Summerby with another big piece of car. He's got the only goal of the game so far. 15 seconds left in the period. Right point. Healy sends it to Novak. His shot blocked. The follow-up try saved by Thiessen on the right post. Great job as Healy was threatening from the line. Now Novak with a shot. That's blocked by Derek Barash. And that's how the first period will end. Matt Dash for possession in the near corner of the monster zone, but Cleveland holds down the fort. Healy denied with Thiessen's best save of the frame. A blocker stop moving to his right. Guys, welcome back to more of your Monsters Flashback presented by HDS Brand Solutions. For your promotional merchandise, print solutions, brand management, and corporate apparel needs, visit hdsideas.com. Happy to be joined now by a special guest, Dylan Simpson, Monsters defenseman and assistant captain 
is with us here. And, and Simmer, uh, you know, this quarantine time is strange, but it's good to see you. How are you guys holding up on your end? Yeah, doing pretty well. Thanks for having me on. Gave me an excuse to shave finally and uh, get myself together. <laughs> That's great. So you guys, uh, of course, have the new baby at home. How's everything going there? How are you adjusting to life as uh, as a parent for the first time? So far, so good. Uh, the wife's been great. Uh, our daughter, Stevie's been sleeping well, eating lots, so no complaints at all. Uh, not a bad time for us to be stuck at home, I guess, with a newborn, which is nice. Yeah, no, no kidding. That works out pretty well. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about the game we're watching back tonight. That is the uh, win that you guys had and come from behind fashion over Milwaukee in the second game of Lumber next weekend way back in early January. Now, I know that was a long time ago, but when you think back to that weekend, um, you guys uh, in, in a shorthanded situation were able to not just compete with, but defeat the best team in the league at the time in back-to-back -back games. Uh, it sort of felt at the time, I remember, as, as sort of a signature kind of a weekend. What did that do for your guys' confidence going forward to know that you could beat the best in the age? Yeah, with the type of season we had, uh, you know, first of all, Columbus had so many injuries. We lost guys to call-ups, and then us on our own, we had a bunch of injuries. So um, very different looking roster at that point than the start of the season and you get a win like that, or two wins like that against the top team in the league. Uh, I think it bona fide the fact that, hey, we're still in this. It gave us a lot of confidence moving forward where, hey, it doesn't matter who's in the lineup. We can find ways to win. Guys can contribute and step up. And, you know, I think that kind of just kept the belief within that group in the locker room. Yeah, you know, that was one of the big themes of the season was just all the adversity you guys faced. I mean, there were consistent call-ups throughout the year and then the injury bug factored in a big time way for you guys. Uh, you know, when you, when you look at this season and, and, you know, if it restarts here, great. Uh, but, but, you know, to this point in the year, um, you, you know, are you proud at all the adversity you guys were able to overcome and the way that you came together, no matter who was in the lineup, found a way to succeed? Yeah, absolutely. I think the big thing is you saw a lot of guys step up playing a, a bigger role than they normally would or they did at the start of the season. I think on an individual level, guys like that uh, take some pride and it's good building blocks, blocks moving forward, whether we do play this year or it's into next year. And then as a team, like you said, we're, you know, you come together, ragtag group almost, or uh, no matter who's in the lineup, everyone still has confidence in one another. I think that was big this year. We didn't always get the wins we wanted. I know we weren't in the position we wanted uh, standings wise, but, you know, everyone always gave it their all. Uh, I think almost every night we gave ourselves a chance to win. And that says a lot with the, uh, with the amount of adversity we faced. Really does. We're talking here with Dylan Simpson on our Monsters Flashback presented by HDS Brand Solutions. Uh, you know, when you think back to that weekend, a big part of it was those awesome jerseys you guys were wearing and all the throwback elements kind of celebrating the Lumberjacks era in Cleveland's hockey history. Um, that had to be kind of a fun weekend to throw on those, those old unis and to see uh, you know, we know that the monsters mean a lot to the fans in Cleveland, but to see that the lumberjacks also meant a great deal to folks in this town. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of fans with their old jerseys coming out of the woodworks and, you know, hear a lot of stories, whether it's from Jock or guys around who've been, you know, within this organization. Uh, it was cool to see their fun jerseys as, uh, you know, we always got a lot of cool jerseys throughout the season, but that one I think in particular was a uh, special to a lot of guys. And then, uh, you know, last one for you here, just thinking about that weekend. I mean, on the first game of the weekend, it was a big overtime win in front of a huge crowd. Early in January, those were some of the first really enormous crowds of the season. And then to follow it up the next day with this come from behind uh, a win in the last five minutes, um, you know, the fans have a, a big part uh, and a big hand to play in, in the way you guys succeed at home, don't they? I mean, urging you on when you know you're down one with 10 minutes left in the game to have that support really does make a difference in the game, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I know I've only been here for two seasons, but I can tell you from the first weekend last season, my first time playing here, I can tell you, you know, best fans in the AHL, they, they come out every night, they're loud, they're, they're excited. And, you know, even a year like this year where, you know, we weren't always getting the wins, they came out every night, supported us, and that played a big role in us uh, elevating our game at home. Well, really appreciate the time, Dylan. That's all I have for you. I know uh, it's busy for you guys at home with, with the little one there, but thanks for taking a few minutes. Good to see you and, and stay healthy. You too. Thanks. All right. That's Dylan Simpson. Now time to get back to the action with more of the Monsters Flashback presented by HDS Brand Solutions. To take on the Kings. With that, we are ready to go for the start of our second period. And as the puck is down at center, we're underway in the middle frame. 
of this one. We'll begin at full and even strength at five on five with the Admirals up one to nothing. Monsters in their white Lumberjacks uniforms from left to right and in green from right to left in their IHL throwbacks as well. The Admirals compete in this middle stanza as they had a shot on net right off the opening faceoff and now they're hungry for more offense. They work in the offensive zone. Scott Savage, the former monster from the left point, sent one wide. We've got an injured Monsters player, Anton Carlson, down in front of the net. Now back to his feet and back to his position at the front of the Monsters goal crease. Pushed around the near wall and back down behind Cleveland's Brad Teeson. Swatted by Clendenning, a puck on edge out to center. Barash then fed it back towards Carlson and he's trying to get off the ice after taking a shot in the leg earlier and so he turned it over there was not expecting to receive that feed from Barash. Back out to the right point. Admirals continue to threaten. Schneider sent one high into the air. Leaping was Clendenning. It's given away though and spun and fired on by Carr, but stopped by Thiessen. The Monsters as a result. Ice one all the way down. Who could blame them? And unfortunately, Anton Carlson, despite his agony, has to stay on the ice with the icing. Simpson is saying, can Carlson come off? He's injured. And the officials are ignoring the please from the Cleveland bench. Face off right side of the D zone for the Monsters. Barash on the draw, now kicked out. No, he's just given a warning. We'll stride back in, give it another go against Tommy Novak. Monsters again ice the puck here. Off the draw, came right back to Clendenin, and goes off the glass. Wanted a few more seconds to catch his breath, I suppose. Face off will stay in the same spot. Just underway in the second period. 18.44 left in the middle frame. 1-0 Milwaukee in front. 11-8, the Admirals have the edge in shots on goal. Barash giving a warning on the faceoff again. This time, one back by the Admirals to the left point. Davies down the near wall for Carr. Back to Davies at the line. Floats it on net. It was blocked by Carlson. Monsters then send it off the near glass. Clendenning up ahead to fix Wolanski. And Carlson still marooned on an island here, although I... You can see he's battling through. Shot from the point by Davies. That never got through to Thiessen. Off a leg and into the near corner of the Cleveland zone. Carlson then taken down behind the net as he jostles with Novak. The puck is loose up the near wall of the Admirals' offensive zone. Fix Wolanski chipped it past the pinching defenseman. But it'll coast the length of the ice and be iced again. Murdered after a choppy start to the period. Four power plays for Cleveland, none for Milwaukee. Good news for the Monsters now, but the tendency for officials is to even things up in terms of the extra man chances as, as the game goes along. So we'll see and, and monitor this specialty team situation to see if the Monsters can make some hay while the sun is shining here and avoid retribution. High sticking to Carr, and so the Monsters forced into their own zone as the Admirals want to face off and clear. Second power play unit gets the first look here. Simpson up ahead to Bittner, feeds one forward. Scott skates into it, far corner of his offensive zone. Sent around the near wall, it'll be held in on the right point by Simpson. Simpson down the near dasher for Mike Prapavesis. Prapavesis works in the slot, a little give and go with Bittner and another. Softening up this box for the Admirals. Pulled in front by Scott. Good move, but he stashed wide to the right post of Grosnick. Still held in. Forte off the far wall. Connected with Simpson at the point. But then an active stick from Gaudreau. Deflected a puck back to the Cleveland end. Simpson just on his own blue line there. Found Prapavesis. He'll feed it back to Simpson. Now the Monsters change their power play personnel. 17-10 left in the second. 1-0 Milwaukee. A minute remaining on Cleveland's fourth power play. As they're trying to tie this game at one. Down to the right point, Clendenin. With it there, down the right boards. Fix Wolanski spins, fires, he scores! Trey Fix Wolanski with a dagger upstairs to the stick side of Grosnick. The Monsters equalize. It's one apiece early in the second. That was a dart and a half from Trey Fix Wolanski. Time of the goal, 3.02 of period number two. A power play strike for Trey. 
wired it on a string from the right faceoff dot. Pass came to him from the right point by Clem Denning, so his assist streak continues. Fix Walansky connects for his uh, second goal of the season and sixth point in his fifth in his last five games. Starting to feel comfortable is Trey Fix Walansky. So that power play goal ties things at one apiece. Off the ensuing draw at center, the Admirals back at full and even strength. Now three for four on the kill. They try to take one away from Marco Dano inside his own blue line there. Dano tried to draw a call, spun down to the ice. No luck, his play is allowed to continue. Dano along to the far boards, delivers a hard check there on Atwal who is pinching. And the puck towards Thiessen, he's gonna gobble it up for good measure, stopping time with 16.28 to go in the second period. So the goal for Fix Walansky from Clendenning on the power play at 3.02 of the period, ties things at one. That's a big goal. And for Clendenning, just more consistent offensive output. So now in his last eight games, he's got nine assists and his active assist streak hits six games now. Tied for the longest in the AHL currently. Whistle here, and the draw will come just outside the Cleveland blue line, offside for the Admirals. Summerby and Johnson paired for the time being on defense. Sherwood with Barash and Dano. The line combinations have been shuffled here due uh, partially to recent power play time. Monsters control the draw. They dump into their offensive zone. Grosnick lost his goal stick, now recovers as the Admirals emerge from their defensive end. Through center, Smith, the defenseman, turned it over on his offensive blue line. That's a dangerous spot. Here comes Sherwood, right wing carry, loads, fires. Love saved by Grosnick, couldn't grab it though. Round to the right corner, Dano in front, a backhand try, they score! Derek Barash snuck it inside the far post. The Monsters with back-to-back -back goals have grabbed their first lead as Barash makes it 2-1. Uh, that's a great start to this second period. Exactly what the Monsters needed. You deal with the deficit quickly, then you look to add to it. And this is nothing fancy. A shot for Sherwood. Finishes a hit on the defenseman at wall. Left unattended outside the crease was Barash and he sneaks it on the backhand. Passed again, the stick side of Grosnick inside the right post. Goal comes just over the four minute mark at this second period. So about one minute apart, the two tallies for Barash. The even strength marker is third of the year and fourth point, and Cleveland leads it 2-1. A whistle off the draw with a puck out of play. The faceoff will come outside the Cleveland zone to the far side of center ice. Big goal for Derek Barash at 4.05. So the goal's one minute and three seconds apart. At 3.02, fixed Wolanski, and at 4.05, Barash. And Dano will get the primary assist as he found him off the base of the near circle. They've added a secondary assist, by the way, to Dylan Simpson on the Fix Wolanski goal. So it's Trey from Clendenning and Simpson at 3.02 of the second. Off the faceoff at center, the Monsters now playing from in front for the first time in the game. Have a puck dumped into their own zone, and now the fourth line will break out. Glance pass behind Simpson, swats it up the near wall. And the Admirals had to reconfigure their zone entry there as they were a step ahead. Another turnover on the Cleveland blue line for the Admirals here. Gerduckas couldn't grab it, here's Richard, his shot blocked by Simpson. Cleveland scoops it out of their own zone. Gallant sent it all the way down, but Forche wins the race, so no icing here. Forche deep in his offensive zone. Tried to feed one into the slot, it was turned over. Out come the Admirals. On the Cleveland line, Prapovesis keeping a tight gap there on Anthony Richard. Dauphin as well. Puck loose on the end boards now. And tossed back around the left side of the defensive end by Cleveland. They're going to give Cole Sherwood a secondary assist on that goal for Barash. Spinning shot in the slot. Salamaki has a delayed call. It's coming up against the Monsters. Blocked down in front of Thiessen. Cleveland will head to the kill for the first time once they can make contact with this puck is Grosnick. Is on the Milwaukee bench now for the extra skater on this delayed minor penalty. Into the O-zone again, here's Carr. He's got the only Milwaukee goal. Feeds it high slot, Davies into the left circle. Donovan creeps in, fires, save Thiessen. And the rebound is pushed below the goal line as the Admirals still with possession. 
Donovan out to the line. Here's Carr, center blue, left-handed shooter, feeds it right circle. Gaudreau drops it off for Carr again in the high slot. Leaves it for Davies now. Delayed call against the Monsters. Cleveland just trying to touch this puck to get a whistle and a halt to time. Center point Davies. Gaudreau down into the far corner for Carr, back to Gaudreau. Right-handed shooter has it at the top of the right circle. Feeds it below the goal line into the far corner for Carr. Threads the needle all the way out to the center point, and it barely missed going in the empty net in the Milwaukee zone, and it would have counted as the Admirals there pulled their goaltender for the extra skater. We're working on what sort of amounts to a power play, and then an errant pass nearly went into that empty net on the opposite end of the ice. Back the other way. Here's Carr. Monsters still have yet to touch it, and now finally do. And the whistle will sound after that shot was stopped by Thiessen. We'll take a timeout, but when we come back, the Monsters head to the penalty kill for the first time. It's the bad news. Good news is they lead it 2-1 thanks to back-to-back second period goals from Big face-off win. Left side of the D zone for Cleveland. And their number one face-off man, honestly, their number one center right now, Justin Scott. Milwaukee breaks out. Second ranked power play in the league. Dano forces a turnover at center here. Then Donovan coughed up the puck. Here's Dano into the offensive zone. Short-handed. The near wall spins one down deep. Scott heads after it there. Now the Monsters get back with a change in penalty killing forwards to the neutral zone and a defensive posture. Simpson, Summerby, Mateau, Barash. Those are penalty killers for Cleveland. Clearance was held in on the right point by Gaudreau for Milwaukee. Left point Davies across the zone, right circle. Carr waits out, Gaudreau, one-timer, never got through to Thiessen, tracking towards that left post. It's loose on the end wall. Carr threads the needle, Gaudreau with a shot, and that glove stop for Thiessen, then grabbed and cleared by Cleveland. Brad Thiessen is seeing everything beautifully today. One minute remains on the Sherwood Slash. 2.45 remains in the second, it's 2-1 Cleveland. Second power play for the frustrated Admirals. Ineffective thus far. Monsters get another clearance here as Anton Carlson sends the puck 200 feet. Two and a half left. Second period. Shots 21-17 for the Admirals, but 20 saves for Tizen. Donovan into the offensive zone. Pushed across. Left wall on the half boards. It's Novak. To Tolvanen in the slot, Richard. High slot, Donovan at the center blue. Now Tolvanen again on the half wall. Back out left point. Donovan down the dasher for Tolvanen. Tolvanen back to Donovan. Left-handed shooter. Feeds top of the right circle. Gathering, firing, they score. Tipped in front, and the Admirals have tied the game at two. It's a power play goal, and Anthony Richard has evened things up for Milwaukee. Richard's second goal of the weekend there as Novak released it. It was tipped. Looked like Thiessen had a beat on it, but in the slot, a great redirection there. And so Richard has his second in two games, his 12th of the year, and his 16th point. So the goal comes exactly at 18 minutes of period two and does come on the power play. So it's 2-2. Two minutes left in the second period. Nine seconds away from completing that second kill. But now even up. Very similar game, similar feel to yesterday's game. If the pace is slowed a bit, the sort of back and forth seesaw feeling has not. Left point, big drive for the Admirals. Right on from Scott Savage, the former Monster. Fought off by Thiessen's blocker. Bounces into the far circle of the Monster's zone. Admirals with a surge in momentum here. So we've got under 90 seconds left in the second period. Pass too far ahead of Fix Wolanski goes the distance and will be touched up by the Admirals. For icing as the faceoff is back inside the Milwaukee zone. I want to remind you guys to stay with us for our second intermission. We'll have our second intermission report complete with the following second period stats and highlights. Our Twitter Ask the Booth question of the night. Our Marathon Blue Jackets report plus discount drug board out of town scores will all help set the table for the third period and immediately at the end of the frame. Is off this draw, a one-time bid from the center point is knocked down by Cleveland's Mike Prapovesis. Good sacrifice there. At the end of the period, it'll be our Labatt Blue live second period interview. We'll be joined outside the Cleveland dressing room by Monsters forward Trey fix Wolanski. Puck played to the high stick at center by Milwaukee, but fix Wolanski was the next to grab it. 
And it's loose to the near corner of the Milwaukee zone where a hit finished by Fix Wolanski there. Keeley jumped out of the way of it. One minute to go in the period. Now Richard, the offensive end, connects with Salamaki in the right corner. Monsters up the far boards in their own zone. Dano captures there in his return from injury to the lineup. To the near side of center for Sherwood. Sends it in deep near corner to far. Picked up by Scott in the far corner. He takes a thump from Salamaki. Centered Sherwood releases and Grosnick made the save. Bounces off to the far boards with 30 seconds left in the period. Monsters draw a penalty as Dano goes down. Cleveland will have a power play and then we've got another big post whistle melee here as Scott is being gone after as Dauphin took a tumble when the play concluded. So all you hope here for Cleveland is they haven't done something to take away what would have been a power play because Dano certainly drew the penalty. So we know that Donovan is getting a penalty for what happened with Dano, that's a trip. What we don't know is if anything else will be administered after the fact. 27.6 seconds remaining here in this second period. Admirals have tied the game at two and right now the only thing on the board is Donovan's minor, so that's good. Monsters will look to use these final 28 seconds to their advantage here. Will be the fifth power play for Cleveland. They are one for four. Vigno will take the draw. Fix Wolanski lines up along the far half boards in the slot at Sherwood. Left point, Clendenning on his offhand. Center blue, it's Mateau on his offhand. Went back to Clendenning on the left point. 20 seconds left in the period. D to D right side, it's Mateau. Creeps into the right circle. Fed it back towards Clendenning. Read well by Gaudreau. Gaudreau's got a short-handed breakaway in front of Thiessen to the forehand. He scores. Admiral surge back in front. A short-handed breakaway goal. It'll be unassisted for Frederick Gaudreau. Comes with just under 12 seconds left in the second period. Thiessen hung in well, but Gaudreau puts the Admirals back in front. Just waited out the goaltender, Thiessen, pulled it over towards the near post. Once Brad committed, the upper part of the net was open, and Gaudreau was able to elevate and finish. The goal for Frederick Gaudreau is his fifth of the year and ninth point. So the veteran... Puts the Admirals back in the driver's seat here. Back and forth. 1-0 Milwaukee, 2-1 Cleveland. Now back-to-back -back Admiral goals. It's 3-2 for the visitors. Final 10 seconds of the period. Puck down at center. Short-handed for Gaudreau. And with five seconds left, that's the tally that will send us into the intermission. Glendening chips it as the horn sounds. And that's it for 40 minutes of play. All right, welcome back, Monsters fans. That's uh, the second period of our second episode of Monsters Flashback, presented by HDS Brand Solutions for your promotional merchandise, print solutions, brand management, and corporate apparel needs. Visit hdsideas.com. As you can see, we're very lucky to have a special guest here to help spend some time between periods two and three as we look back at the Monsters' big win over Milwaukee on Lumberjacks weekend. It's Jeff Christian, Lumberjacks legend, and Jeff, Great to see you. How are you holding up through this quarantine? Well, I'm actually having a good time because uh, my second grader's done school, and I just I just love spending as much time with her as I can. So she can't get away from me. I don't have to put her on the bus. So I'm having a good time. Uh, I'm doing real estate here in Ohio and Columbus area, and uh, obviously that's kind of ground to a halt. But uh, no, we're hanging in there. We're doing all right. We're, uh, she learned to ride her bike, and we've been rollerblading and uh, going for long walks. But we're all getting through it. Yep, absolutely. It's it's a definite silver lining of this weird situation all the time we get to spend at home with our loved ones. But uh, we're here today to talk about Lumberjacks weekend. Now, you were there. Um, you, of course, were there for the real thing <laughs> back when the Lumberjacks were in their heyday. Uh, and I remember talking to you that weekend a lot about just remembering how big the Lumberjacks were once upon a time. Uh, if you go back to, to the 90s and your time in Cleveland, just how special a time was that to be a part of what the Lumberjacks were doing in the IHL. Oh, it was amazing. It was uh, just incredible in Cleveland. The, like I said, the Indians were winning, the flats were booming, and uh, the Lumberjacks, we, we moved down to the gun, now uh, uh, the field house, but um, 94, we opened it, and I mean, it was just a great time. The new colors and color scheme came in in 95. Um, the IHL kind of 
embraced marketing and, and like I went to a high number to 72 to honor my dad who was a football player but um, yeah it was just a really exciting time and Larry Gordon was there he was a real character and I, I just used to love to go up into his office and he'd be up there smoking cigars and telling stories about when he signed Wayne Gretzky and um, but I loved Cleveland and I, I do love Cleveland still got a lot of good friends there um, terrific memories and um, I played three years with the Jacks and then left for two and then came back for one. But, um, you know, sometimes I wish I never would have left. Yeah, it's, it's a special place. And uh, we all know that having worked there, having been there, uh, you know, really at any era of Cleveland's hockey history, the one thing that's always been true is that we've had amazing fan support. How much did the fans mean to you during that time uh, when you played there? And also to come back this year on Lumberjacks weekend and see a lot of those same faces still out, still supporting hockey in our city. Uh, the fans were amazing back then. I mean, we used to get some sellouts like uh, Dallas Cowboy Cheerleader Night. I, we'd be packed, and uh, I, I think we averaged at one point like twelve, thirteen thousand a night. So it was pretty exciting. Great fans. I mean, I always like to get out and meet the fans, go on the radio, do the promotions, go to the hospitals, that kind of stuff. So I embraced it, and um, and they in turn. Re- was voted by the fans starting all-star one year so the fans were amazing to me i mean i I, like i like you said man i still got some really close friends that i met in 94 95 yeah it's uh it's a special thing and it was a great weekend too just bringing it back to lumberjacks weekend on the third and fourth of january uh it was great having you guys out and and uh getting to see all those great videos of jocko scoring goals and talking trash and all that good stuff but um just uh that weekend in particular what was it like for you to to be back to remember the lumberjacks days but also to share in a little bit of uh what the monsters are doing now uh in in sort of carrying on that tradition of hockey in cleveland I, it was it was fun i had a good time and of course yeah always uh, great to see jock doing his pumpernickel and and yeah, everybody, uh, again, like I, I've said many times, I just love Jock, and I think he's, uh, he's the greatest uh, in Cleveland hockey, really, really a top-notch guy. But uh, it's always great to come back to Cleveland and see the, 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 the friends and uh, the fans. But uh, you guys are doing a fantastic job. The, the, uh, the rink, you know, the game ops and the production, it was great to see the old Lumberjack jerseys on the ice, and they had a big win that night. But uh, I'm happy to be part of the uh, the Cleveland hockey history, and any time I can come back to Cleveland and, and come to a game, I'm going to jump at that chance. Well, Jeff, it, it's great to see you. It was fun uh, back then on Lumberjacks weekend. It's great to check in here today. Thank you for taking the time, and, and again, hang in there. Stay safe, and all the best to you and your family. You too. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. With, uh, without further ado, it's time for the third period of our Monsters Flashback. Thank you to Jeff Christian for being here as the action continues, presented by HDS Brand Solutions. Out of town scoreboard, we're ready for the start of period three. Players hit center, the puck is down, we're underway in the final frame of this one. Monsters will begin this third period on the power play in the midst of their fifth power play opportunity, and they now trail in the game by a score of 3-2 after Gaudreau's shorthanded goal. Monsters in their white Lumberjacks jerseys from right to left. In their green throwbacks, the Admirals left to right. Monsters set up shop in the offensive zone. Right point, Clendenning into the far corner. It's Cole Sherwood out to the center blue. Mateau loads, fires, and that one off a leg. Off the end wall, Vigno had a chance on the near post, but Grosnick reacted nicely and made the save, and then the Admirals get a clearance. Bounces down to the right of Brad Thiessen and will be retrieved by Clendenning without pressure as Milwaukee was orchestrating a change in penalty killers. Here comes Clendenning. Hits his own blue line. Now the center red. Fires one to the left of the goaltender. That off the end wall and loose for Bittner. Tried to go upstairs from close range. Missed the net, but Scott recovers. Feeds it center point for Clendenning. Off to the far wall. Simpson walks down into the corner. Simpson thinks it over. Still just surveys his options. Now feeds right point. Loading for Jay towards the net. His shot was blocked. Off his skate. Recovered by Simpson on the near wall. Tried to shuttle it back to the center blue and Clendenning. Off the mark, goes all the way down, and Thiessen is out to retrieve the puck for his defenseman. 18 and a half minutes to go in regulation, and final four seconds now. Tick away the Donovan tripping minor. So the Monsters will see the power play end without a goal. Two for two on the kill. For the Admirals. 
beg your pardon. They're now four for five. There, there we go. That makes a lot more sense. Four for five on the penalty kill for Milwaukee. As we're back to full and even strength. 3-2, the Admirals in front. Thanks to a couple of late second period goals. And the Monsters, after taking a 2-1 lead, surrendered that and now have to play catch up here to start the third. Trying to do something that no team has done this season in the AHL and that is defeat Milwaukee when the Admirals have a lead heading into the third period. 20-0-0 this season are the Admirals in that situation. Here comes Carr into the O-zone for Milwaukee. The right circle, no room, spins back towards the wall, feeds the right point Schneider. Then Donovan back to Davies for a shot that stopped by Thiessen and then from in close. The Monster is able to wedge that rebound wide of their own cage as this bounces in the slot, fed into the middle and a, an attempt from Carr is squelched as soon as it was released. Bounces out to center, the Monsters get a change in forward. 17-15 left in the game, 3-2 Milwaukee in front. Across the line again, Carr headed off as he hit the high slot. Out in a crowd of green uniforms, Justin Scott cannot get the puck in deep. So the Monsters will recoil now as the Admirals regroup. Milwaukee's a different team when they've got the lead. Certainly confident in all situations given their great success this season, but you can see that the Admirals are a club that's not accustomed to playing from behind, and they find themselves in that situation. A little bit out of sorts. Rely on their great skill, though, to get themselves back into games, and that's what they did at the end of the second period to take this 3-2 lead. Monsters break out of their own zone with 16 and a half to go. Sherwood dumps it in from the right side of center, heads for a change. Near wall of the Admiral's end, Cleveland Stefan Mateau as the puck find him, and he releases a quick shot on Grosnick. Wants to hang on to it and finally gets the whistle as Cleveland applies some pressure. Faceoff will stay inside the Milwaukee zone. Hey, fans, don't miss a minute of AHL action this year with AHL TV featuring cutting-edge technology, interactive features, and fan-friendly subscription prices available on desktop, laptop, tablet, mobile, and OTT devices. You can watch where you want, when you want, the way you want. Visit theahl.com slash AHLTV to sign up now. Face off left side of the offensive end for Cleveland. Barash won it back. Great passing play, a shot, and they score! Mateau with a one-time crank from the high slot, and we've got a tie game again. It's 3-3. Three to three. Stefan Mateau continues to pour it on. Fix Wolanski's going to have his second point of the game with the primary assist. Barash should have his second point of the game with the secondary and winning the faceoff. The goal to Stefan Mateau is TPK three for Cleveland. They're one for two and a big spot in the game now. Under 11 to play in the third, tied at three. Draw one back, right point car for the Admirals. Been around to the far circle. Working with it there, slugged back to the high slot for Carr. Center point, Donovan back to Carr. One-timer, Carlson blocked it with his back. And he labors to get to that puck and is still in awful pain. You can tell, hunched over right now, grimacing, trying to get to the bench, and he'll get there. As here comes Barash, shorthanded two on one. Has Mateau in the middle, feeds Stefan, base the far circle, shoots it, and bounced wide of the net of Grosnick. He might have gotten a piece of it. Then Barash fires it around the near wall and back to center as the Monsters play keep away. And Simpson will take his sweet time and now coasting this from his own zone deep into the Admiral end. Just a minute 15 remains on the power play for Milwaukee. So the game is still tied at three and we hit the halfway mark of the third. 10 minutes left in regulation. Down to the far boards in the Cleveland zone. Pitlick charged into by Scott. Good stick lift by Summerby there as he battles with the puck carrier Carr. It's out to the right point for Milwaukee. Held by Davies down the near wall. Carr slides it base the near circle. Spinning and firing. Schneider saved, but on the rebound. They score. Rem Pitlick with a power play goal for Milwaukee, and the Admirals grab the lead again. It's 4-3. to three. Now Rem Pitlick has done a lot of damage on the power play this year. The Admirals now 2-3 for three with the extra man. The second chance opportunity for Pitlick goes in the book as his 11th of the year. Pitlick entering today's game. Six power play goals tied for the rookie lead. He now owns the rookie lead with seven power play strikes this season. Carr is going to get the assist. The Monsters head back to even strength with 9.45 left in the period. Time of the goal, 10.15 of the third. So it's 4-3 Milwaukee. The Monsters have their work cut out for them. Off the ensuing faceoff at center. Salamaki back into the Cleveland zone. Low shot along the ice, kicked away by Tyson. 
Controls the rebound into the far side of his defensive end. Now the Monsters with some speed. Have Abbott Gerduckis through center. Finds the red line. Chops one into the far side of center. Simpson after it there. Puck again bounces into the air. Down to the ice went Forche. And inside the offensive zone, Gerduckis punts that puck along. But now the Admirals have control in a four on two situation, but it's turned away thanks to Clen Denning's decisive tight gap on his own blue line there. Was able to take away what was a four on two rush. Clen Denning wanted a breakout pass from Summerby. Now Summerby reconfigures the forwards as they swing up ice. Pass to Vino, hits the red line, fires it in deep. 8.45 to go in the third. Admirals now lead at 4-3 after Pitlick's power play goal. Left point, Summerby fires towards the net. Saw it all the way. Did Grossnick grabbed it in the glove. And the clock halted with 8.38 left in the third. We'll take a timeout. Admirals have the lead. 4-3 Milwaukee with under nine minutes to play. We'll have more third period action from the Fieldhouse next on the Monsters Hockey Network. The league's top team asserting their steadfastness in this hockey game. They have battled back from a couple of deficits and have generated a few more of their own. Now have a one goal lead here, eight and a half left. Back to Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Tony Brown with you on Alt 99-1. Monsters are offside on this entry here after Clen Denning was upended rudely and didn't appreciate that. A few seconds prior on the shift, faceoff will come outside the Milwaukee line in front of the Admiral bench at center. Fans, the Monsters and Cavs have teamed up again this year with Tito's Handmade Vodka to support assists for a cause. For every assist made by the Cavs and Monsters, Tito's will donate 10 bucks to Rising Star Academy to help fund conductive education therapies to date. They've donated close to $9,000 this year already. An awesome program, thanks to Tito's, but also thanks to the Cavaliers. Face off left side, offensive zone, Barash will take for Cleveland. Monsters down by a goal at 4-3 with 8.15 left. Big hit along the far wall in the Milwaukee zone after the Admirals won the draw. Simpson back to retrieve. Gets out of the way of a body check, then receives the pass from Glenn Denning. Simpson through center on the left wing. Fired one off the leg of Donovan into the far half-board area of the Milwaukee zone. Pushed back to the right point, Glenn Denning. Tried to go behind his back, and that could have been hooking there as the stick... Right into the midsection of Clen Denning there as he couldn't get that pass released. To the near side of center, Barash weaves against the grain. Ducks across the center red, powers a slapper just wide left of the net from the center ice area. Off the end boards and gathered by Davies and the Admirals. 7.34 left in regulation. 4-3 Milwaukee. 29 shots for the Admirals. 25 saves for Brad Thiessen. Meanwhile, 22 shots for Cleveland. 19 saves for Troy Grosnick, the Admiral Netminder. Monsters toss this deep in the offensive zone. Vino crunches in on the four check. Push back around. Turkoff snaps it up the near dasher. Didn't get all the way to Johnson, his intended target at the point though. Taken by Carr, uh, filtered into the Cleveland zone. Johnson retrieves in the corner, battling with Cole Schneider for Milwaukee there. And it's loose, picked up by Turkoff, fed through the slot. Back out to the right point, Atwal. Down the dasher into the near corner. Shoveled in behind the Cleveland net. Bittner, though, with a quick change in direction. Finds Turkoff, the pass back to Bittner in the center circle. Great reception on that pass from Paul. And then Gaudreau, after the Monsters copped it up on their offensive blue line, he returned the favor on Cleveland's blue. Pass ahead, here's Turkoff. Right wing offhand entry. It's around a man, that's the defenseman Smith. Tried to cut to the front of the net, shovels and it was loose in the blue paint. And then forced to the far corner where Prapavesa statues in deep again behind the Milwaukee net. 6.15 left in the third. Monsters need a goal to tie their down four to three after Pitlick's third period power play strike. Left circle, Dano never received the pass cleanly. It's in a high traffic area. Admirals will ice the puck here and Prapavesa touches up. Face off back to the Milwaukee zone. 6.01 left in the third, 4 3 Admirals. As they're looking for a split after dropping a 3 2 overtime decision to the Monsters in this building last night. Fans, every weekday home game's a hockey hoppy hour presented by Labatt Blue starting at just 12 bucks. The Monsters hoppy hour deal includes a lower level ticket in your first drink on us. For details on Monsters hoppy hour presented by Labatt Blue, visit ClevelandMonsters.com.
Fans spring to life. They're trying to urge the Monsters or Lumberjacks onto a tying goal off the draw. Long wrister from Simpson. Loved by Grosnick and held, and then Dano cleared out of the Milwaukee crease. Drawing the attention of Atwal and Smith and others. After the save by the oh, Milwaukee no. area native, Grosnick, for the Admirals. Final timeout. Under six to play in the third. It's 4-3 Milwaukee. Can the Monsters come back? One way to find out. Join us after this break. The Monsters Hockey Network. Woo! Mike D'Amato here from Nissan and North Olmsted and I-90 Nissan in Sheffield Village. The bells have rung. Old Lang Syne has been sung. Confetti flung. And we're trading the old year for young. Now that the balloons have dropped, the corks have popped, and calendars swapped. Stop in to see us and save on a new Nissan. Are you kidding me? The best part of the new year is 365 new chances to find out what thousands of Clevelanders already know. We just can't say no to any deal. If you're looking for a new Nissan, we can save you up to $1,000 off. On top of that, you'll find APRs as low as 0%. And if you're looking for a pre-owned vehicle, you'll find hundreds and hundreds of great pre-owned vehicles at direct auction pricing. Start off your new year by starting up a new Nissan at Nissan and North Dumpset on the North Dumpset Auto Mile and I-90 Nissan. Route 254, exit 148 in Sheffield Village. to work. 5.56 left in the third. Admirals four, Monsters three. The end of Lumberjacks weekend, a huge crowd of over 11,380 souls urge the Monsters towards what they hope will be an equalizing goal. Teeson remains in net, the face-off left side of the Cleveland offensive zone at five on five. Scott kicked out of the draw and vocal in his disagreement with the linesman's ruling here. Monsters will reconfigure. Dano will take. Scott lines up in the shooter's hole directly behind him, the top of the circle. Dano won the faceoff, or at least kind of pulled it back initially, but got his stick hung up in his opponent there, and so could not sweep it to the point. Monsters, though, still have control. Clendenning inside his own blue line to Simpson. Cuts back. Great edge work as he backhands it towards Grosnick. Grabbed in the glove, but the Milwaukee goaltender then spit it free. Here's Salamaki on the near wall. Scales ahead, Tolvanen sends it to the near corner of the Monsters zone. Clendenning ties him up, and Simpson is there. Pushes one the length of the ice. Will it be called icing? No. Heinzman washes it out. Scott with a hard hit on the end boards. The fans in that area of the arena enjoy that. High slot turned over. Scott feeds Sherwood right circle, fires glove save for Grosnick. Then Grosnick should get hit with embellishment for that as he fell back on his rear end after being Brushed by Mateau, trying to draw a penalty, no luck. No penalty in either direction. 5-11 to go in the third, still 4-3 for Milwaukee. Amazing crowds. Last night, the largest crowd of the year, over 12,600. Today, for a 1 p.m. matinee, 11-387, so it's a grand total of over 24,000 fans to watch AHL hockey in the IHL throwback unis. What a great weekend to celebrate the Lumberjacks and these tremendous Cleveland hockey fans, many of whom date back to those Lumberjacks days and have been here ever since supporting the Monsters throughout their AHL history. It's a gift to be a part of this hockey community in this region, and these players know it. They see it demonstrated by these fans every night. Off that last face off, the puck out of play, they'll try again, right side of the O zone. Five minutes left in the game. Monsters down by one at 4-3. Here's Barash, near side of his offensive end. Tried to connect with Mateau in the slot, off his skate, back inside the Cleveland blue line. Johnson with a head fake there, retrieves, scales it to Mateau, left side of center. Matt Donovan, Stefan Mateau, grapple for it, and Donovan able to spike it into the Cleveland end. Goes all the way down, but no icing, because it was deflected by Mateau right when it was released. Glenn Denning has it, patiently hits his own blue line, then picks up the speed, feeds it to Fix Wolanski on the right wing, tried to back into the zone with possession. Couldn't execute it. Davies chips one off the glass and out. Fought through a hit from Fix Wolanski. Bounces into the Cleveland end boards. 
Where waiting was Johnson. He was hung up with Dauphin into the slot. Great save for Thiessen with the glove. Denies Olivier. Back out to the right point and lofted towards the net by Savage. Knocked down in the slot by Cleveland's Clendenning. He pushes on the backhand ahead. Turkoff, though, couldn't connect with Vino on that feed into the middle. Back is Olivier. Right wing carry into the middle. A little one-time redirect there. Would not cooperate for Wilkins. The Monsters push the pace back in the other direction. Summerby found the red line. Flips it to the near corner. Bittner pursues with under four minutes to play in regulation. Monster still trailing by a goal at 4-3. to three. Far corner offensive end. Turkoff feeds it to the right point. Summerby, D to D left side. Dylan Simpson towards the net. He scores! Took a turn. Simpson put it off a stick and it beats Grosnick who never saw the shot. Simpson levels it at four and it's new light for the Monsters with 3.38 to play. of the third period. Dylan Simpson picks up his second point of the game, his 11th of the year, and his sixth goal this season. Just a simple shot from the left point, but Grosnick screened thanks to Paul Bittner in the puck. Changed direction on its way. It wasn't a gloriously beautiful goal, but it's exactly what the Monsters needed to get back on even footing. 4-4 in a great game. Dylan Simpson's sixth of the year, and... With three and a half left in the third, it's a new contest once again. Off the ensuing draw, the action only intensifies. Scott and Dano push ahead. Here's Sherwood, offhand left wing entry for the Monsters. Into the middle, Dano, one-timer and a left pad save. Nice stop by Grosnick, nice play by Sherwood and the shooter, Marco Dano. Summerby delivers a big hit along the far wall in his own zone. Now fed out high slot, Donovan fires one. It was blocked in front, it hit Simpson and then finally found its way to the end wall. As making his way off in some pain here is Cole Schneider. Dropped his stick, he's grabbing his face. And now he's headed for the Milwaukee bench and he'll head for the Milwaukee dressing room. Back deep into the Cleveland zone. Behind the net, Johnson headed off at the pass with 2.45 remaining in regulation. The Monsters now have numbers up ice. They have this game tied at four and look now for a go-ahead goal. Fix Wolanski, sharp angle chance in front. Off the outside of the net, drips back to the top of the right circle. Anton Carlson feeds it into the near corner with it. Mateau out to the left point. Fix Wolanski lobs it towards the net. Grosnick the save and through all kinds of traffic hangs on in the glove. Stops the clock with 2.24 left in the third. Summerby and Turkoff assist on Dylan Simpson, sixth of the year, to tie this game at four, 16-22 of the third. This has been just a great game. One nothing Milwaukee, two one Cleveland. That's one lead change. Then three two Milwaukee. That's two. And then tying the game up a couple of different times are the Monsters here in the third with Bateau's goal at 3.42 and Simpson's at 16.22. 4-4 with 2.20 left in the third period. Draw controlled in the Milwaukee end by said Admirals. In front of the Cleveland bench though at center, Turkoff able to grab a puck and stash to Simpson. He finds Clendenning. It's Vino, Bittner, and Turkoff the forwards. Vino across the line, right wing entry, right circle, fires. That one blocked by Donovan. Rebound chased down low by Vigneault. That wall had it for a moment. It's fed around the dasher, out to the right point. Clendenning hurries one on, tipped by Turkoff and into the corner. Turkoff has it there. Far corner of his offensive zone, back to Bittner. Uses the dasher to feed Clendenning. D to D, center point Simpson. Top of the far circle, Bittner back to Clendenning at the line. He scores! Adam Clendenning on a one-time floater. Beats Grosnick from the blue line. It's 5-4 Cleveland in the field house is in hysterics now. With a minute 44 to go in the third, Adam Clendenning somehow found daylight on Grosnick from the right point. Got the shot off quickly. Bittner will get the assist. Vino and Turkoff screening in front. The goal for Clendenning is his sixth of the season. Another multi-point game for Adam. And how did this beat Grosnick? Kind of a knuckler. And it went over his glove hand. Time of the goal, 18-16, the third period, 5-4. Cleveland, can you believe it? Assists to Bittner and Simpson at 18-16. And now the Monsters are just a minute and a half away from an amazing result for the weekend. 
Off the ensuing draw, the clock is Cleveland's friend. We're under 90 seconds left in the third. Clendenning's goal makes it five to four monsters. Cleveland drops in from center, it was on net. Grosnick now is gonna follow his team's breakout out of his own zone and head off for the extra attacker. Milwaukee into the offensive end. Monsters bounce one out towards their own blue line, chip back into the Cleveland slot, empty net for the Admirals. Monsters with the 5-4 lead, and now one minute remains in this third period. Cleveland with possession here. Sherwood pushes out to center, takes a look at the empty net, tried to go for it from the neutral zone, it misses wide, and is picked up by the Admirals with 50 seconds left. Milwaukee tracking to their own blue line. At the center red line, Dauphin flicks one into the near corner. Simpson bats it into the far side of his defensive end. 35 seconds left with the Monsters in front, 5-4. Thanks to Clendenning's late strike here in regulation. And wall of the Monsters zone. Clendenning scrapes it into the far corner. Richard with it there. Batted out left point for the Admirals. Right point, Donovan, a blast! He hit the crossbar! Oh, the Monsters were that close to seeing their lead vanish again. And now after Cleveland ices the puck, only 18.2 seconds remain in the third. It is 5-4 still. Nothing Milwaukee, then the Monsters, after that first period deficit, scored twice at the start of the second period to take a two to one lead. After that, Milwaukee went back to back with goals under two minutes apart at the end of the second period to take a three two lead into the second intermission. In the third, four goals have been scored, three of them for Cleveland. First, Stefan Mateau even the game at 3 3 early in the final period before Milwaukee took a lead on Pitlick's 11th at 10 15 on the power play. And then back-to-back -back goals again for Cleveland, under two minutes apart from Simpson and most recently Clendenning at 18-16, leading the Monsters up 5-4. And now as the net is empty for Milwaukee, as the Admirals have spent their time out, and as Cleveland is pressed into their own zone, a 5-4 lead for the Monsters means that Cleveland is one face-off win away from a a really remarkable result. Let's not forget against not just a quality team, but the AHL's very finest team, the Milwaukee Admirals. A 3-2 overtime win yesterday, and now 18 seconds between the Monsters and their destiny this weekend. Draw one back by Barash. Clendenning up, not out of the zone. Held in left point, 13 seconds left. Monsters trying to find the end of this weekend, the end of this game. Eight seconds left now. Still in the far corner of the Cleveland zone. It's batted into the near side. Four seconds left, three seconds. Two and one, big scramble. That's it, Horn sounds, game over. The Monsters find a way to take down the top team in the American Hockey League on back-to-back -back nights. Your final score as a big scrum sends us to the end of regulation, Cleveland five and the Admirals four. The Monsters. Well, they found a way to get it done, Jock. That was fun to uh, fun to remember back. Uh, the Monsters down midway through the third period, a couple of goals in the last five minutes and completing the sweep over Milwaukee. I mean, I remember at the time, uh, it felt like a big point in the season, kind of a turning point type thing. Uh, the Monsters finding a way to, to put Milwaukee in their place and and even when it looked unlikely there in the third period, find a way to score goals, which wasn't always easy for the club this year. Yeah, the Monsters had a lot of uh, tough, tough games with scoring goals, with getting a lot of chances um, some games and just not scoring with, you know, the likes of Zach Delpy out, and Nathan Gerby up, and just all kinds of uh, your offensive players uh, out of the mix. So uh, they really stepped up, and, and uh, like you said, it was a big – point in the season where you thought, well, if you get you know, Milwaukee coming in, best team in the league, if you get swept, you're, you're, uh, you're that much farther out of a playoff spot. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the other thing I wanted to touch on, we saw it in this tape, watching this game back, but also in the first episode of this flashback series, just the impact that the fans have at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. It's always been true that they make it a very difficult place for opposing teams to play, but it seemed like specifically on this weekend, the fans remembered what it was, uh, what it was like, really, to, to help the team to be that sixth player, seventh player on the ice and help push the guys over the finish line. 
Yeah, both both games were good crowds and excited, and uh, a lot of a lot of people were excited about the lumberjack uniforms and, and uh, a little nostalgia there. And uh, it was an all around great weekend for the monsters. Well, it was just watching your highlights of uniforms. I think the guy <laughs> go. certainly a lot of fun and a, and a lot of fun to share that with you as well. All right. Well, Jock, that's it for episode two of Monsters Flashback presented by HDS Brand Solutions. Up next, our third episode is going to feature uh, Nathan Gerby's dramatic home overtime winner early in the season against Charlotte in uh, on, in fact, the first of November. So that's what we have to look forward to here on Monsters Flashback. But this has been the second episode. Uh, Jock, great to see you. Thanks for the time as always. Stay safe out West. Yeah, you too. Take care. All right. That is Jock Callender. Uh, We'll talk to you next time. I'm Tony Brown signing off on Monsters Flashback presented by HDS Brand Solutions.